Okay, so this video is going to go over using S Tunnel for a HTTP S Tunnel as well as CertBot for the certificate. So first thing you want to do is right mouse click on the file there for uh, Windows. Then you want to put it into a folder where you know where it's going to be. I use the downloads folder. It's pretty simple. It takes seconds to download. Um, after it's downloaded, uh, you just simply double click on the exe that's there and go through the process of you know installing a file. Next, next, finish. During the installation, uh, what's going to happen is the first time it's going to say, okay, so you're going to need a certificate for this. And so give me some information about that and I'll put that into a certificate. We're not going to use that certificate, but as an example, it's going to say, what's the country, city, province, what's the name of your domain? In my case, uh, it's, our, uh, it's our station here, one of our Windows servers here that runs Play It Live. Once it gets installed, you're going to notice this little green button, right mouse click on that, go up to edit configuration. The configuration file has pretty much everything in it you'd need with S Tunnel. We're only going to need to do one thing. We're basically going to take in traffic on port 443 for SSL and then we're going to pretty much redirect it to the port that Play It Live uses for its remote management. And so uh, if you guys will see that I just highlighted a little piece of that config file there, that's really the only part of it we're going to use. That file is in C program files x86 s tunnel config. If you go into that folder as I am right now, you'll see the default s tunnel dot config file. And what I want to do is I'm going to uh, simply make a copy of that and just save the original so that if I make any mistakes, obviously I, I can go back. So I'm just going to rename it a ridge s tunnel config dot a ridge um, and I'll save it in there in case anything goes sideways and that's just the sort of a common behavior that I do with most modifications of any of these text files of course worse comes to worse I can just reinstall the whole thing right anyway so now I have a config file that pretty much I can you know mess with um, and the nice thing there is that we get to go in and pretty much delete a whole bunch of it that we don't need what I like to do though is I like to go again we where we did edit config where I showed you that in the beginning I like to go through there and modify the config files because that way when I save it there's no question about where it is that I save it on the desktop by accident was in a previous folder so you go down to where it says HTTPS and pretty much from there you highlight all the way from HTTPS all the way to the top none of that stuff above it we're going to need for this exercise anything with a semicolon in front of it that's a comment and so therefore the default setting everything is commented we don't need anything below this either all we need is this HTTPS section uh, that is going to be accepting traffic on port 443 and it's going to be using this stunnel.pem which could be anything it be it could be the cool key for my website.pem that is generated here because we're not going to use it. We then reload this config, and now S Tunnel is basically saying, okay, I'm going to accept traffic on port 443, and I'm going to redirect it to port 80. That is the default setting. But what we want to do is we want to use the, in my example, I use port 22222 for uh, Play It Live remote management. And uh, so I navigated to that here on the server. Why isn't it running? Well, because Play It Live isn't running. So this is just to show you that I'm actually going to be running play it live in the background so therefore if you are going to be doing this on your production machine play it live is going to run in the background it runs fine none of what we're doing here will disrupt the man or the the audio coming out of play it live at least that's been in my experience so you're probably familiar with this if you've set up remote voice tracking or you've set up remote management you just go into file and manage and then you set the port a lot of us will just leave it at the default it it can be one, two, three, four, five, and whatever you want. I just choose two, 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 two. Um, and then, of course, to do that, you start the server. There's plenty of other videos, actually, that Jason did very well uh, on YouTube to show you how to set up remote management. So now, because it wasn't available before, you will see something that you're probably used to, which is this. This is the login screen. However, in the upper left, it has this, your connection's not secure. Now that I've gone to this site before, so my Chrome browser, or Firefox for that matter, is willing to accept it, it's just going to let me know, hey, this is not secure. We really shouldn't allow you to do this sort of thing. If for no other reason than you're going to be typing in a password, that's going to go through the internet effectively in clear text. Not recommended. So if I go back into the edit config file, 
you'll notice that the HTTP section, it's accepting stuff on 443 and it's going to redirect it to 80. That's very common. But in our example, what we're going to do is we're going to redirect it to port 22222 and then we're going to use this cert as the certificate that sort of shows up when you click on the lock there in your browser. Reload the configuration again because we've changed the port number. And we then go to HTTPS, the name of the website, or the name of your server. It's going to say the connection is not private, and so that's weird, right? But the reason, and you can even proceed, which, you know, many people will do, but it's still not secure. Well, why is that? Well, that's because this certificate that we generated when we installed this, it's not known by any browser. It's just something that we did. Well, if you use CertBot, then you get a certificate for free that you can also auto-update for free. So CertBot.EFF.org. There's plenty of documentation on this, but I'm just going to show you quickly how to basically install it for our instance, which is it's not really running any standard web server because it's coming out of Play It Live. Uh, and it's using the Windows operating system. Again, plenty of documentation in here. Feel free to uh, read it. The bottom line is that we're going to be serving up an HTTP website, and we're going to be using DNS credentials to verify that we own this domain. So to make a SSL cert, then you're saying, okay, world, I own this domain, I promise. Like right now, we should not be able to just create an SSL certificate for google.com, right? But for our domain that we own, then we're gonna be able to do this, create that, and then when we go to a website using HTTPS, it will in fact encrypt 100% of the traffic, but it'll also be recognized by the browsers and you won't get a crazy pop-up window. Right now, I'm just kind of scrolling and going through the basics of the, like, yeah, you know, to take some time, read the documentation, but go down to section four. There's going to be the place where you can download CertBot, right? Mouse click on that. Download this EXE. It is also very small. Again, put it somewhere where you're going to recognize it, where you're going to remember where it is. And then just simply run the installer. Uh, what it's going to do is it's going to put files into C program files x86. Um, it's also going to put some files into uh, C colon backslash CertBot. And th for the most part, those are the only two places really that you need to run any, uh, be concerned about any of that. As an aside, I wanted to show you guys that you don't just run the command prompt. You need to go to CMD, right mouse click on that, and run as administrator. Just because you're logged in as administrator and you click on command prompt doesn't mean you're running as an administrator, but that's necessary for this, as it says there in the documentation. Again, sample, you know, standard install, double click on the EXE you've downloaded, next, next, finish. Um, unlike with S-Tunnel, there are no uh, requirements. Through the magic of Julia Child, I'm not gonna go through this whole thing, that's how it ends, it's quite spectacular. A green bar goes across the screen. Um, but the point is, is that uh, you're going to want to watch for a couple of things. It is going to pause during the installation because it's compiling some Python scripts. And then the final thing that it's going to do is it's going to wait there a few seconds, and then you're going to get one final sort of piece of information, which is it's setting up renewal tasks of this cert in Windows Task Scheduler. I'll show you that a little later. So now you've got CertBot installed and you've got S-Tunnel installed. Well, S-Tunnel was basically working and it was passing traffic, but it wasn't passing secure traffic as far as your browser's concerned. So go into command prompt as administrator. From there, what you want to do is you want to navigate to C program files, x86, and CertBot. And be and and to be fair, when it installs this, you can pretty much run CertBot from most places. But I'm doing this just in case your path isn't set correctly. This will be 100% guaranteed that CertBot is going to work. So you go into that directory, and if you want, you can type CertBot dash dash help. It'll give you all of the help commands. The ones that we're going to be concerned about is D domain because we're going to be setting it for your domain. We're going to be doing it manually um, this first time. And we're also going to be uh, providing it an email address. If you were to go through and just type CertBot and then go through all of the sort of questions that it asks you, um, it will ask you for all of these things. This is the command here that I'm running. I'm putting it in the notes, in the description. If I forget to or you can't find it, please just email me there at info at bkk.fm. As far as the individual sections of this, I want to go over that. So the first part 
is simply running the certbot command. We're getting a cert only. We're not going to install anything. We're doing it manually. The way that we're going to verify that we own this is via DNS. We're going to be making a DNS entry. I'll go over that more in a second. The domain we want to do this for is the domain that we're using for our Play It Live server. So in my case, it's my Windows server that's in Germany, winGerm.bkk.fm, and then I'm just giving it an email address that it uses. Actually, what it does is it's going to notify you uh, 30 days in advance uh, from when these certificates are expiring. However, all it is is a notification. You don't need to worry about it. I'm also going to show you a little bit later how the system will effectively auto update these certs. So not only do you get these certs for free, but they will auto update through a uh, scheduled task in Windows. And again. This whole command, I'm, I'm typing it out here. Uh, it is a one-line command, and you can simply copy and paste it from where I have it displayed in the notes, in the description, in that sort of thing. Preferred challenges, DNS. We're going to be uh, putting an entry into DNS. And I'm going to show you how to do that, how I do it in my uh, domain registrar and the system that I use for DNS, which is AWS Route 53. Anyway, so you run that command, and it basically says, like a lot of things that you've run in Windows, hey, so are you going to accept the terms of service? You are welcome to read that in as much detail as you want. The short answer is you want to type yes. <laughs> the next one is, hey, so you gave us your, your email. We're going to let you know when the certs are going to expire. However, is it cool if we like send you information? I've done this enough times. I don't need any more information. I choose no. Bam. All of a sudden, you now have it wanting to generate a certificate for you. But you have to prove that you own this domain. And you're going to do it via the verification method, method that we chose, which is DNS. And it's like, okay, well, then you need to put a text record in to your DNS entry. This is the entry that is going to be, and then later it will, two lines later, it shows you the value. So those two things are what you need to put into your DNS. Now I'll show you how I do it for me, because I have my DNS hosted in AWS or 53. Yours might be in GoDaddy. But regardless, DNS, again, it's a table of names that correspond to either other names or to numbers, right? And so no matter what DNS you're in, you're going to create a new record. You're going to be creating a TXT record. So you go down and you choose that. The record name is the beginning of what it gave you. Again, don't close that previous window. Um, so what you'll do is you'll say, okay, well, I did it for domain.com. So the beginning of it is always actually going to be acmechallenge.domain.com. In my case, you know, bkk.fm. Uh, so put it in there. You'll see my cursor going back and forth. The reason I do this and the reason I'm sharing this with you is I always put my information in there and then I use the arrow keys on my keyboard to go all the way left and all the way right just to make sure I'm not, I don't have any blank spaces in there. The next thing you want to do is, okay, what's the value for this? Well, that gives you that value. Value. It's a massive random hash. And again, copy, paste that in. This is not what is there, but I didn't want to make it mine. Put it in there again. Arrow keys all the way to the left, all the way to the right. No extraneous spaces. And then depending upon how sophisticated your DNS is, I can refresh uh, mine every 60 seconds. So I chose that. So therefore, it's very fast. But I also scrolled down and make sure I actually did make the entry. So then I hit submit, and I'm basically waiting this 60 seconds right now for it to happen. So I went on a quick roller coaster ride, and boom, I'm back. And so therefore, the entry I'm going to assume is in fact in DNS. And I did this, and look at this. I now have a free cert that I can use in my browser. I can use it for other things, but in this case, and here's the location of it. It's going to put it in CertBot Live, and then the name of this, uh, the folder that you're looking in is the name of the domain. Go back down to our buddy S Tunnel. Go up to Egg edit config and remember that's where we put in the 22222 our specific um, play it live port for remote management and it also had that certificate that key in there that we generated but it doesn't really recognize it so what we do is we replace it with the one that we just made that is for us for free so we copy and paste that link 
In addition to the certificate, we need to put the key in. So in other words, we gave it the address, we gave it the address of the house, and now we're saying, okay, well, here's my key to this house. And they're like, okay, but what's the certificate? So then you have the certificate and you have the key, and obviously your domain, your uh, directory will be different than mine here, but you're looking for those two files and you're gonna wanna put them there. I put in a little bit of documentation for the first time that I put it in there because it tells me when it's going to expire. So I put just two quick lines of documentation again in this file if you use a semicolon that uh, delimits a com uh, comment and so therefore it's not going to execute on that so I'm like look I put this in here on this date and here's the date of expiration even though it's going to have so I save it I go back down right mouse click on my little s tunnel guy and I reload the config and now s tunnel is running and it's using that cert bot cert to pass the traffic that comes in on 443 which is the standard SSL uh, port HTTPS and then I go right to the name of the domain of my play it live server that I normally would type in like domain colon two 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 however this is going to redirect it and as it did before so yes it's still serious but this time it's secure so this tunnel is 100% secure my browser is no longer going to balk at me and here's the certificate here's when I just generated it here's the domain I generated it for and there's where it uh, expires completely cool and so now you have a secure connection to your play it live remote stuff how do you renew these certificates? Well, the short answer is you don't do anything. You let Windows do it. But what I'm gonna show you is again, in that screen where it gave us the folders, the location of this, the certs that it generated, it also says, hey, so here's how you generate this. Because again, you can buy a cert. Sometimes they're good for one year. They're good for many, many, many years. You can get a five-year cert. It costs money. These are free. They expire every 90 days. But remember in the installation, it set up a scheduled task. It basically set up something that it's going to run in a certain amount of time. As it turns out, the cert bot auto renew process, even though it expires every 90 days, it runs it twice a day, 12 noon and midnight. You can change those if you want. If for something you, you have some crazy amount of stuff happening on your computer at 12, run it at like nine minutes after and then whatever. You don't even need to run it twice a day. You can run it once a day, but it runs that cert bot renew command. And all I'm showing you here inside the scheduled task is the command that it is going to run. So I'm going to just run that in PowerShell, run as administrator. Again, right mouse click, go up run as administrator I can again I can run this from any location I want it's just it before so I'm copying pasting it in there there were some other sort of flags in there that says hey run this don't give me any output I don't want to do this if it did if it, if it breaks don't worry about you know it doesn't want to log it or whatever so anyway, I'm running cert bot renew and it says well okay I mean I can run this and I have found out where your certificates are but they don't need to be renewed so don't worry about it and I'm done and uh, that is effectively what you want. That's a good thing. Uh, your certs are not going to, but that's going to run twice a day. Personally, I think running it once a day is fine and running it usually not at the top of the hour when I'm usually doing a whole bunch of other stuff, potentially in a log or in an automation system. So there you go. I hope that helps. Feel free to ask me questions below. Um, send me an email if you'd like, info at bkk.fm. With that, I hope this helps. Happy radioing. Talk to you soon.